Coming up next, guys. Before we get onto the water, I want to send some shout outs to some of our friends out there. How about our crew over there at Pleasure Craft Marine Engines, PCM, the power behind the passion. For over 40 years, PCM has provided top quality inboard engines for the world's finest water sports boats. We invite you to swing by the GM Marine booth to see why PCM is the leader in inboard marine propulsion. When it comes to performance, durability, and customer satisfaction, PCM has earned a reputation unmatched within the industry. Thanks to the invaluable partnership with GM Marine Engine Technology, PCM is the exclusive engine provider for the Nautique Boats and the 58th Masters. Oh, yeah. Well, Dano, the only difference here in the junior men compared to the junior women is we're going to bump that boat speed up to 36 miles an hour now. 36 miles an hour, the rope lengths are going to be the same. So we're going to, we're going to see a, a little bit of the same strategy opening up at 28 off, 32 off, 35. And uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling. We're getting tightened and linked up on the far end of the lake. That's right. Well, folks, if you guys see a Team Nautique athlete walking around, take a selfie with one of your favorite riders or skiers out here to win a Super Air Nautique G23 remote control boat. Post your photo on Instagram at Nautique Boats, hashtag Nautique Masters to enter, or you can show your Nautique pride, get a photo of anything Nautique on site. Once again, it's hashtag Nautique Masters at Nautique Boats for your chance to win. Also, don't forget to stop down at the Nautique tent uh, for your chance to win some other great prizes we're going to be giving away throughout the weekend. We'll be talking about that. But right here, right now, our first skier on the water, Quinn Haynes, representing out of Hartford, Connecticut. He's on the water. Quinn Haynes. And we, we took a look at Quinn Haynes a little bit earlier in the trick competition. Let's see what he can do here in the slalom. Again, that boat speed, 36 miles an hour, 28 off. You know what's really cool? I was taking a look, Dano, of that Nautique 200 coming right towards us down the slalom course is the graphics this year. I mean, really, really cool, unique graphics to this 58th Masters, the 25th Junior Masters. Uh, these skiers just laying it all on the line. We've had a great start. The weather has been tremendous out here. If you're tuning in on the webcast, slight texture on the water, but literally no wind, clear skies, and nice, crisp, clean, cool air when you're in the shade. All right, well, so Tyler, you say you like the colors of that Nautique 200 out there? I do. Well, why don't you take those colors, go online to designyournautique.com, and completely customize your very own Nautique 200 with your favorite colors that we're looking at out there on the water. Save those to your uh, profile online, guys. Once again, it is designyournautique.com. Dude, it's fun. I, I pretty much go on there and design my do, own G23. Do you do a golden like, mic uh, G23? Uh, it, well, I, I try to find the closest to my gold microphone as far as their colorways, and they've got so much to choose from. Once again, it is designyournautique.com. Athlete bag lunches are now available next to the administration trailer. So get on over there, athletes. We got athletes on the water. All right, so Quinn Haynes coming in. Little bit fast coming into number four, over to five, and there it is. That second pass is in the book. So you can see that speed picking up. Again, transitioning from 60 to 65 miles an hour off that second wake. The skier has to set the opposite edge to slow down. When you see a tight line, Dano, that's a good sign because that means the skier is traveling just as fast as the boat, which allows them to maneuver around the backside of the turn and get a cross course to the next buoy. Slack line means you're traveling faster than the boat. You have to take a huge load on the upper and lower body, but here, Today, the Masters, sometimes, you know, it's just not perfect. You got to take those loads to make it into the next round. All right, well, we are going to continue watching. That's Quinn Haynes out there dropping down two passes into his run. I want to let the athletes know the lunches are served at the tent next to the administration trailer. So athletes, get on over there. Get your lunch. Get your munch on. Uh, guys, be sure to check out the all-new Nautique Network over at Nautique.com. 
Get the latest updates on your favorite Team Nautique athletes and oh, so much more. Also, guys, if you didn't know, Nautique is constantly pursuing endeavors to aid and help those in need. Through their Nautique Cares Initiative, each year they dedicate their time and resources to impact and help others. For more information, please visit NautiqueCares.com. Back at it on the water. All Tyler. Right. Quinn Haynes, 35. Look at that deep at number one. Hangs on to the handle nice and long into number two. Needs a big turn there. That's the load I'm talking about. Somehow gets outside of number four. The athletic ability there. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Quinn Haynes. Absolutely unbelievable right there for Quinn Haynes. And uh, man, he saved himself big time from a big out the front crash on that one. But uh, we'll have to see if that score will set here. Now, Tyler, a moment ago, I was just talking about Nautique Cares and NautiqueCares.com. And of course, their initiative to help those in need worldwide. Um, I know all the athletes have had their opportunity to get out there on those missions and uh, give back to communities all over the world. I've been waiting, man. I'm hoping to get on one of these trips one of these days. How about you? You think they bring announcers with? Oh, I think they should, most definitely. I mean, it's amazing what Nautique's been able to do with Nautique Cares. Um, always, it's always a pleasure and honor to follow Bill Jurgen through his social media adventures of everything they're doing in the industry. I mean, they're touching all the bases, and I think we should. Dano, we need to get on a mission trip. I think we would be a great a part of that because we could go out on one of these missions, and I'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, getting ready to pound those nails in the roof of that house, Nate Smith. <laughs> well, that would definitely bring a new element to the mission. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Nautique, it's just, it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here each and every year because they're always doing something, whether it's in the boating industry or out in the mission field um, with Nautique Care. So, Dano, we need to put that on our calendar here in 2017. Absolutely. Well, guys, stay in the conversation through social media all weekend long. Use our social tags. Make sure you're tagging Nautique Votes at Nautique Votes on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Hashtag Nautique, hashtag Nautique Votes, hashtag Nautique Masters, of course, hashtag Ski 200 during the uh, ski events, and hashtag G23 when the wakeboarders are out there on the water. The Ski Nautique 200 strong, consistent pull is getting ready to bring our next athlete down the line. Coming up next, representing from Reunion Island. He comes from France. This is Lindsay Portier. He's gonna be on the water now. Uh, Lindsay, um, you know, uh, Lindsay, he's, uh, he's really known as a trick ski specialist out there. But uh, I am ready to see what he can throw down uh, right here on that slalom ski in this, in this semifinal round. 28 off is going to be the starting line length for the 16-year-old Frenchman. Let's see what Lindsay has got in store for us right here, Tyler. You're right, Dano. We normally see him out there on a trick ski, but here he is skiing in the overall competition on a slalom ski, traveling real fast, needs to make up some ground, Dano. Running late into number five and just inside of number five. So unfortunately, um, not going to advance onto the next pass for Lindsay Bordier in the slalom event, which leaves about six competitors here in the junior men's slalom semifinal. And, and Dano, you take a look at it and you just never know. I mean, out here on Robin Lake, the conditions look pristine, but sometimes when you're out there, the action, the prestige, there's so much. But the good thing for Lindsay being 16 years old, he's gonna be back, there's no question. He's gonna challenge that course again next year. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's great to see we've got folks from around the nation, around the world, tuning in via live webcast, masterswaterski.com. Big shout out to the Moomba Masters champion, my good pal, T-Gas Thomas DeGasprey, watching us over there in the, the chalet. And a big shout out to all you guys. If you want to get that shout out, you can send a message to myself. Uh, Dan Lamano through the Golden Mike Podcast on Facebook or Tyler Boyd through his Facebook page as well. If you have either of our phone numbers, feel free to text us and uh, let us know that you guys are watching us. Now, for those of you guys watching us right now, take a look right there at the top of your screen. You see that right there? Okay, yeah, you're seeing that. I'm looking at it, okay? Uh, well, it's not really above my head, but it's, a, it's above your screen. Uh, that link, take that link, copy that link, you know, go over it, highlight it, 
copy it. Go to Facebook and post your status as masterswaterski.com. Let everybody know that we have live water ski, wakeboard, and wake skate action coming your way all weekend long from Callaway Gardens, courtesy of our friends at Nautique Boats. Guys, this is the biggest, the best Masters of all time. We've already seen some amazing action go down uh, in the junior trick and in the junior women uh, slalom fields. We're on the water with the junior men slalom athletes. Uh, the, uh, the, the weekend is set. We've got some great sponsors. Uh, the fans in the house, these are some of the most energetic fans. These guys and gals are all into it all weekend long, supporting the athletes out there on the water like this guy. Coming down the line next also from France, this is Louis Freeborg, another athlete we saw making that podium uh, in the uh, junior men's slalom event earlier today. Let's check it out as he comes down the line. Coming into the course here, Lewis around number three, solid approach into number four, and uh, there it is, pass number one for Lewis Freeberg. Like you say, the uh, social media is starting to light up here, Dano. I got a message from Heather Bonney. She is a big fan of yours, I know, down Bigger in Austria. Bigger fan of yours, though. Well, I don't know, but she's tuning in. Heather, thanks so much. Part of Bonnie Water Park down there in Australia, Five Lake site. And uh, unfortunately, couldn't be here, but she told me before this tournament, she was going to be tuned in all nighters, all weekend long on that 12-hour differential. So, Heather, thanks so much for tuning in. Yeah, get back down here, Heather. We had a lot of fun that last Master. What was that, two years ago she was out? That was a great time. But, folks, you hear it right there. You guys want to get in on the action, let us know. Send us a message. Uh, we are here, Dan of the Mano, Tyler Boyd, uh, the 58th Master, the 25th Junior Masters. We are rocking around on these microphones all weekend long. We've got junior men slalom semifinals on the water to be followed up by junior women slalom finals, junior men slalom finals. A little bit of a course change before we get back on the water with the junior women and junior men jump uh, semifinal and final rounds. Followed up by the junior pro wakeboard division. That's going to cap off our day here on Robin Lake. Of course, so much going on off the water. We'll talk about that. But tonight we got movie night finding Dory here over on the beachside area. Back on the water, Lewis Freeborg down and through the course here as he approaches the four ball around number four. Some nice speed over to number five and around number five. Great speed back around. Picture perfect. Ask right there from Lewis Freeborg already uh, starting his weekend strong with a second place finish in the junior men's trick division a little bit earlier today. Give us an unofficial word on that score right there, if you don't mind, Tyler. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be six full buoys. And the intensity that Lewis brings both to the trick event and to the slalom event, just throwing up walls of water down the lake. Officially, six full buoys at 32 off, running total 48 buoys. So. 35 is next, and it's going to be in that slight tailwind. Dano, you take a look at the names. There is some heavy hitters coming up. It's going to maybe take uh, a full pass here at 38 off to advance into the next round. Only time will tell, but Lewis is getting set and ready. The weather is absolutely gorgeous. The fans are building towards the shoreline. It looks like everybody is getting set up down on Vendor's Row. You want to stop by, not only for the great merchandise that's exclusive here at the Masters, but also all of the athletes on site. Make sure to get autographs, pictures, and of course, hashtag Nautic Masters. Lewis coming back in. 35 off 12 meter line. Great start around number one. Can he keep the momentum going? Chatters a bit out of two. Over to number three, makes up ground. Around number four, over to number five, a bit late out of five, and makes his way around six. Hang on to the load, Lewis. You're going into 38 off. Well, man, even with that little chatter out of three ball there, he was able to compose himself and get him, his body back in order. And Tyler, we talked about being a patient out there, and uh, you saw that from Lewis Freeborg on that pass. His uh, third pass of the set so far as we've shortened that line up to only uh, 40 feet behind that boat, 35 off. The next line link falls just inside that 38 marker. Uh, that uh, I'm sorry, inside that buoy marker at 38 off. 
Uh, really, really excited to watch this one go down. Uh, fast, loose, on the edge of out of control is what you can expect to see from the uh, slalom division all throughout the weekend. These guys and gals have worked so hard over the last year or so to get these spots here at the Junior Masters, uh, the most important, the most prestigious event of the year in 58 years running. I don't know of really any others. Uh, you know, there aren't too many other sporting events that have anything as prestigious as this event here in the world of Toad Water Sports, the Nautique Masters. 38 off that handle just inside the buoy line. Lewis Freeborg back on the water, taking that start cut outside, gonna get that pull in at 38 off around number one, over to number two. Early at two, over to number three, big turn at three, pulling over to number four, wheeling a little bit around number three as he came over to number four, got the ski over to the three, to the four ball, but as he came around the ball, I don't think he had the tip of his ski turned back at the uh, at the um, the buoy line, at the gate line. So can you give us an unofficial number? I'm going to go with three at 38 off. We'll see what happens. Tremendous score. There it is. Officially, three buoys at 38 off. All right, Tyler, real fast. If you can just, for those folks online kind of watching, and even those folks here maybe new to the world of slalom, uh, we, we hear the terms a full buoy, a half buoy, a quarter buoy. Can you break down uh, what the difference is between all three of those? Absolutely. So a full buoy here, you have to get back to the wakes in skiing position, basically headed across course. And it will get a little bit more technical than that as we make our way through the weekend. We'll make sure to point those scenarios out. A half a buoy, the ski basically makes the turn, but the skier doesn't get out of the finish of the turn. Now, they need the handle at that point to be scored a half buoy. The same thing with a quarter of a buoy where it's basically the ski is running parallel to the buoy line going down the course but still you need the handle as you make your way past the buoy to be scored a quarter a half and a full buoy. And we're rocking and rolling. Look at this skier. Uh, the Hungarian is the on Hungarian. the water. Aaron Albert is out there right now, 17 years old, the Hungarian record holder. Let's see what he can do here as he starts off his run. And it's, uh, trying to get dialed in here at 28 off, around number four and off to number five. No real issues there. And you know, so many of these athletes, you know, they're they're going through school at the same time that they're developing all these ski these skills as being skiers. But it looks like Aaron also loves playing basketball. They're so versatile; they can do so many things, and we've seen that year in and year out. The talent is unbelievable. The one thing that I'm always interested in, I even on my podcast, I talk to a lot of the athletes about this is on dock rituals, you know, and and I'm sure you know a little bit about that, you know, getting your focus before your run, and. A lot of the uh, riders that I talk to, a lot of the rituals uh, have to do with not watching the competitors before them. And actually, what I think is really cool about Aaron is he actually uh, finds it relaxing to watch the skiers before him. It doesn't really stress him out. I think that's really, really cool. So a guy who know, you know, he, he gets to watch those other skiers. He knows what he's going to need to do. Well, we'll see what he can do right here as we shorten that line length up. Uh, we're going to take four feet off that rope. Yeah, I can do math. We're at 32 off right now as the Hungarian Aaron Alpert gets back onto the water. Let's check this out. All right, so 32 off. Of that standard 75 feet behind that Nautique 200. Aaron coming in. Looked uh, dialed in on pass number one. Needs all of this one. Pulls out nice and wide. And here he goes. Nice, easy turn around number one. Trying to find that rhythm here on Robin Lake in this 25th Junior Masters competition around number five. And look at that, Dano. Solid, solid ski. And I believe this is the first year that we've seen Aaron Albert in this competition, but he's looking like a seasoned vet out there at 32 off. All right, well, he's riding that D3 Quest 45 out there. D3's got an amazing demo program. And uh, find out why some of the biggest names in our sport exclusively ride D3 skis by stopping over at the D3 booth and uh, find out about their entire product lines uh, over there on the vendor's row, all kinds of other stuff. You can stop over at the C-Deck booth, get some C-Deck samples. Big shout out to Marcus Brown, see him in the house. Return those text messages, son, come on now. And then you get that five-star rating, boy. 
All right, uh, we got the crew from Ambush and Biwake.com. They got those HO skis and the Hyperlite wakeboards over there. Be sure to check that out. Dime, Derek Diamond Davis and the crew supporting the Masters year after year after year. Uh, big ups to them. It's so great to see all these sponsors out here. The, the conversation we had with Pete Surrett from O'Brien a little bit earlier. Uh, great guy, great brand, and uh, you know, just some great product over there. We got the crew from Wake for Warriors here, so we'll talk about that. But right now, 35 off that line length, and Aaron Albert on the water. Oh yeah, nice hookup at number one. Good extension at number two. Aaron is in this thing. Aggressive turn out of three. Terrific transition into number five. And that was an aggressive, aggressive pass there at 35 off. Building that momentum now, Dano, into 38. And, and we touched on this in the, the ladies slalom. As the rope gets shorter, you can see that ski set a little bit deeper and those carves out of the backside of the turn almost going 90 degrees across the course. You know, and, and maybe, maybe we can get back to incident replay on that one, but as a color commentator myself, you know, I like to really break down and, 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 and talk about what I'm seeing out there. And one thing I, I noticed was that wrist and twist control uh, from him as he came around those buoys, that handle control a little bit different than, uh, than than some of the other skiers, but once again, as you go all the way around the world and, and with these uh, different skiers here, uh, the different ways that they do what they do, at the end of the day, you know, yes, you can go uh, learn technique, you can learn from the best, but what it all comes down to, it doesn't matter which way you do it, it's all about getting around those buoys and back behind the boat. Absolutely, and Dano, there is. There is some very unique styles out there, some, uh, ride a little bit lower, some stand taller, some come in and twist their wrist up for some rope control. There's all sorts of things that we're going to see here this weekend, but first thing is first, Aaron Albert on the water to challenge our current leader at three at 38 off. Can he get any piece of number four dropping in? And look at that start at 38. He's over to number two. Can he turn number three and get outside of number four? It looks like he can. He's around number four. Can he get a piece of five? And he is just inside. But Aaron Albert is your current leader with four buoys unofficially at 38 off. Absolutely. Guys, well, we're going to take it back down to the dock. Uh, Aaron doing a great job. Aaron Albert, great to see him making his debut in Junior Masters. Folks, I got a special announcement for our friends over there at This Is My Story. You looking for something to mark this Memorial Day weekend as one of the most memorable? Well, then you'll need to make plans Saturday night, that's tomorrow, to join us all for the world premiere of the short film Miracle Matt. Near the top of his professional wake skate career, Matt Manzari has spent the last four years putting all the pieces back together after two near-death accidents. Uh, he's here with us, the 58th Nautique Masters, to premiere This Is My Story short film about his miraculous recovery. Come join us all Saturday night from 8 to 9 p.m. For more info, stop by the This Is My Stories booth. And uh, somebody stand, uh, sitting up here in the announcer's tower might have a audio cameo in the movie as well. I did voiceovers for it. Nice, Dano, nice. So uh, if you don't know, uh, if you don't know uh, Matt Manzari, well, this is such an inspiring story. Matt is someone that I'm glad to call a friend, a guy who I've been able to announce for, and I'm excited to see his story this weekend. Honored to play a small role in the making of it, and well, just thank God that Matt's here with us today. We got athletes on the water right now. This is Eris Tecores. Representing from Greece out there on the water, the young Greek athlete. Let's check this out at 28 off, around buoy number one through the gates. Nice pull over to number two and around number three. Over to number four. It should be a super smooth and easy pass as he comes around that fifth buoy. Over to number six. No doubt in my mind that I definitely uh, messed up his last name. Tekor, Eris Tekor on the water. We're going to meet him and find out exactly how to say it a little bit later. Took second place at uh, Junior Worlds, but he is the Greek national champion. He has a personal best score of three buoys at 39 off. That is short line. That is very short line. And you take a look at the Junior Worlds where he placed the seventh scored four buoys at 38 off 11 meter line and you you know that that would be a tie for the lead right now so dano we are getting into 
wear those quarters, those halves, those full buoys. They all make the difference now. Uh, the cutoff has been in years past around four buoys at 38 to advance into the next round. It's been very interesting, although the scores of all these skiers able to advance into that 39 and a half off line length, if you go look at the Junior Masters history, there has been very few competitors actually clear the 38 off line here on Robin Lake. So it is something special to get through that 38 off line length. And let's well, see if Ares can do it here. Tyler, no one ever said that Robin Lake is the easiest lake to ski. They only say it's the most prestigious lake to ski. We've seen some amazing feats of action out here. But right now, Ares is coming through for his second pass, uh, 32 off. Should be another silky smooth, easy pass. A little rough water as he comes past the announcer's tower. The oh. Robin's Nest. And talk about the drama as he came around four ball. Let's go back to instant replay. He goes down, but I want you to break down exactly what happened right here. Well, he looked like he had a pretty good start out of number one to number two. Ran into some issues right here at number three. The ski started to chatter, and he tried to put it back in the water at number four and was just unable to do it. So going down there, unfortunately, but there's such a promising future here for Eris. And uh, I got to say, Dano, it's going to get very interesting now as we move into our top three seeds of who will make it into the next round. Currently, Aaron Albert right there on the bubble with four at 38 off. All right. Well, Robert Hazelwood, Sean Hunter, and Ryan Canepa, you are talking about three of the most talked about skiers in the world of slalom under the age of 18 years old. Get ready for a little poetry in motion on the water. Uh, these guys have punched a ticket to the Masters 2017 for a reason, and it all comes down to skill. Each of these next skiers able to easily get in to that uh, 38 off and deep into the 39 off uh, rounds of action. So what will we see here today? We find out in just a moment. I believe each of these guys have scored at least four buoys at 39 off in competition at one time or another. With the texture, it looks beautiful out here on Robin Lake. Here's Robert Hazelwood. Call it out, Tyler. All right, so Robert Hazelwood, a veteran to this Junior Masters competition, looking back at 2016, podiumed at uh, the second position here in the slalom event. So Robert Hazelwood knocking down pass number one, 28 off, short work. Now, Dano, you take a look at it. The veterans, really, the top three seeds here have all skied here before they, you know, obviously want to get into the next round of competition, but anybody, anybody has the shot to get on the top of the podium here as there's such talent here. And, uh, you know, Robert Hazelwood's had all year to think about that second position. He would love to advance it to the top of the podium here in 2017. Absolutely. Well, we're going to keep it going here. We are, uh, we are checking it out all around the world. Uh, folks are watching us live through webcast. The junior world champion in the world of slalom ski is on the water, representing uh, on his trick ski and slalom for D3 skis. Hopefully you guys had the opportunity to stop over there at the uh, D3 booth. But uh, big shout out, Sean Murray, keeping his eyes here on the uh, webcast. Sean Murray's gonna be up here announcing the wakeboard stuff with me a little bit later on this afternoon. Uh, probably kicking off sometime around 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, we, we'll find out. Right now, we are in the semifinal round of Junior Men's Slalom. Be followed up by Junior Women's Slalom Final, Junior Men's Slalom Final, our jump heats, and, of course, Junior Pro Wakeboard. Here he is, Robert Hazelwood, pass two. All right, so Robert Hazelwood, pass two, looking pretty good. And Dano. Here we go. So Robert Hazelwood, again, one of those competitors in the overall competition. So important just to clear that 32 off, make sure those overall points get onto the board. That's it. That's what he's done here. And now 35 off in a slight tailwind situation. 
It's so interesting because just watching these juniors develop year over year over year, you know, what used to be a very difficult pass and still is, 35 off, these guys making it look so easy. And then now 38 off, 39, you're looking at personal best. You know, Robert Hazelwood at the Junior World Championships has a personal best, Dano, get this, Four at 39 and a half off. I mean, almost clearing that uh, 10.25 meters, and that's that's a big, big step as he's progressing his his way into the elite ranks. Well, absolutely, the numbers are surely impressive. Uh, speaking of impressive, uh, we just had the disabled water ski world championships down under in Australia about one month ago. Team USA looking pretty solid out there. Big shout out to one of the members, Connor Pagetto, watching us live through uh, the live webcast right now out there in California. Big shout out to you, Connor. We need to get uh, Connor out here to do a little uh, demonstration one of these times. Here we are, 35 off, guys, getting short out there on the water just outside of the buoy line. This is Robert Hazel, which should be another silky smooth easy pass for him as he comes around the four to number five, around number five, and over to number six, getting around number six right there, and uh, catching a little bit of slack as he came around that six ball, but able to recover. This guy is a serious beast out there on the water. That is Robert Hazelwood. Well, Robert, trying to get dialed in on three and five, took a heavy load out of number three, and then at five was trying to work out the kinks and got on the tail of the ski, had to rock it over to number six, and then fortunately got out the gate. So there it is. Judges score him six full buoys at 35 off, a running total of 54 buoys. You can see the current leader, four at 38 off, that 58 buoy mark. So Robert Hazelwood... Knowing that Sean Hunter and Ryan Canapa are on the dock, needs to get any piece of number five to really, you know, be in a safe position to get into the next round. Well, the momentum coming out of uh, 2016 with his second place finish here at the Masters, uh, uh, posting a score of 435 off. Uh, Robert Hazelwood is back on the water. He is uh, past that score already. It's only the semifinal round of action. 38 off that handle just inside the buoy line. On this one is Robert Hazelwood. Sets up wide outside. Starts through those gates around the first ball. Big pull at buoy number one. And going off the front and taking a shot to the ribs right there. Giving us a wave, but something tells me that did not feel good going down guys that's gonna do it for him masters make some noise for robert hazel going back to that slam could be crash of the day so far robert hazelwood as a traditional uh overall skier there he knows how to take the impact he's been in that position before one buoy 38 off, not too shabby. Where do we sit right now as we get down to our last two skiers, Tyler? Well, that would mean that uh, Aaron Albert, the Hungarian, has punched his ticket into the final round. So how about that with Sean Hunter and Ryan Canepa yet to go? Uh, even though Robert Hazelwood went down there at number one at 38, still a strong overall score. So we need to continue to pay attention to that story as it unfolds here this afternoon. But a strong overall score there. Um, and we'll see if it's enough to get into the next round. Only time will tell. So here we go. Dano from the USA, Mr. Sean Hunter, your next skier on the water. Absolutely. Sean Hunter uh, skis with the likes of Matteo Luzari uh, up there in North Florida. He comes to us from just over the border in Dothan, Alabama. Actually heard his name getting talked about uh, during the uh, uh, last episode of the Flo Flow Point podcast with Marcus Brown. And uh, this is a dude, you know, second to top seed in the junior men's field. But he is a guy who's already made his debut in the pro field a couple of weeks ago at that uh, Swiss Ski School uh, contest. And uh, looking forward to see what he can do. 
It's all about this warm up right here, right now. 28 off. Let's check it out. Let's see what Sean Hunter can do around number one. And you can take a look at Sean's style. He skis very tall, very smooth as he transitions from one edge to the other. Sean Hunter getting dialed in. I know he's been training a lot with Mateo, been following uh, those two guys on social media. So, um, when Mateo's your coach, you know you're dialed in mentally for this competition to handle the pressure and the prestige. Great opening run there for Sean Hunter. Again, uh, from the southern region, skied here last year, Dano. So, you know, to get one under your belt and to come back this next year, this could be a great year looking to advance into the next round. 17 years old, the young man from Dothan, Alabama, just over the Florida border. Uh, the guy's been uh, competing for uh, since the age of six, so over a decade's worth of, uh, of experience out there. He's riding that D3 uh, ARC-S, the ARC-S, and uh, you guys can get over there to the D3 booth and check it out. Also no stranger to the Nautique 200, representing Miami Nautique International. Uh, great to know we've got a lot of the great Nautique dealers from around the nation watching us live. Uh, my friends at Silver Spray Sports up there in Michigan State. Uh, of course, the uh, crew out there in Phoenix, Arizona, my, my gang over at Action Water Sports, a big shout out to them. But Sean Hunter back up on the water right now. He's the junior U.S. Open champion from 2016. Let's see what he can do right here on his second pass at 32 off. All right, here comes Sean around number one. And you can see just drops that hip back into the line. So smooth, so easy, and uh, looking nice and solid here on pass number two, Sean Hunter. You know what I really like about his style, Dano, that handle really never moves from that hip. And as he finishes that turn, he releases and comes back onto the handle. He keeps it closed and tight, making that ski travel all the way across the course without any hesitation. Sean Hunter getting it done. So some big scores here. I mean, not to be underestimated, still has to get through 35 off, still needs to get midway down 38 to advance into the next round. Well, and anything can happen out here. The one thing that I notice about Sean Styles, you know, I do a little bit of ski school myself. I go out and I ski with Thomas DeGasprey over at the T-Gas Ski Club down in Orlando, Florida. I do that about once a week at least. And Thomas will always give me these tips, these hints, these pointers. He tells me what to do. I think I'm doing it. I don't. Sean Hunter right there has taken everything his coach has told him. He puts it out there on the water. I mean, you are literally, if, if there was a textbook about how to run the course at 28, 32 off, well, so far, Sean Hunter would be the uh, picture boy for that. Yeah, Sean Hunter doing a great job here. So that line is getting tight. The 200 is locked and loaded, ready to go. Sean Hunter coming back in, 35 off from the USA, let's see what he can do. And the start's so important here. Literally no wind whatsoever here as Sean Hunter makes his way through the gates and he is around number one. Great start here at 35 off, nice and tight at number two. Over to number three, look at this. Hunter getting dialed in around four to number five and that is the cleanest, smoothest 35 we've seen today. Absolutely. Like I said, this dude is straight out of a textbook. Uh, uh, something tells me his coach wrote that textbook. Sean Hunter looking so strong out there. And uh, if he can keep this momentum going, I mean, we are looking to some big, big scores from the 17-year-old Alabama native out there. Uh, you know, you look at the scores that he's put down in competition and... Uh, you know, one of the youngest riders to get as deep into the course as he has uh, in, in, in his career. And you talked about uh, skiing with the likes of a guy like uh, Matteo Luzari and the mental game. Well, it's definitely not easy to learn to navigate the course at these uh, short line lengths. But once you're there, you got it. The question is, can you mentally stay focused uh, when you are uh, in the big program, the main event? And even though... This is that semifinal round of the, of the Junior Masters. For some, this is the main event of the year. Oh, this is the main event for Sean Hunter for sure, and he needs to get into the final round. So let's see if he can challenge the leader. He needs any piece of number five to do so. 
And here we go, 38 off for Sean Hunter. Let's see how the start is. A little slow out of number one, needs a big turn at number two and can't hang on out of number two. So this is interesting, Dano, unofficially one and one half at 38 off. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sean Hunter. This is that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them hood girls, them good girls, straight masterpieces. So I'm doing my announce, announcer's math up here, uh, Dano, and yeah, it looks, <laughs> yeah, th this is scary. So Aaron Albert clearly in the lead with that four at 38 off, and then I believe we have Lewis to plan Freeburg three and a half at 38 off, and then Sean Hunter at one and one half at 38 off. So that would put him on the bubble with our top seed, Ryan Canepa. Man, I'm loving it. Looking through here. Big shout out once again to the USA Disabled Water Ski Team. Connor Pagetto watching us live through webcast. Dan Reed watching us live through webcast. Just got a message from the Flying Fine, Eric Fine himself, man. Looking forward to seeing you here on Sunday for the main event, Eric. Uh, guys, shoot us those messages through social media. Uh, of course, uh, you can send it through all the Nautique uh, social media feeds, at Nautique Boats on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We'll call those out as we see them. Or you can directly message Tyler Boyd at Tyler Boyd on uh, Facebook or the Golden Mike Podcast. That's me, Daniel Lamano, on Facebook as well. We're going to do our best to call it out as we see it. But right now, making his way out onto the water from Folsom, California. Put your hands together for the 2016 Junior Masters and defending Junior Masters champion, your U.S. National Slalom champion, Ryan Canepa. All right, so Ryan Canepa, top seed here in the semifinal, 32 off for Ryan around number five, over to number six. Take a look at this, Dano, take a look at this. 2017 was able to clear this 38 off loop and uh, you know challenge 39 and place third at the Junior Worlds. Like you said, he has a personal best at four buoys at 39 off. So this is a guy more than capable of getting into the next round of competition and being the leader. Ryan Canepa, California dude, coming here to Georgia, hopefully to throw it down on Robin Lake. You know, I was out announcing the Disabled Worlds a few years ago uh, out at Shortline Lake in California, just outside of Sacramento. Ryan Canepa was out there. He was hanging out. He was helping. He was doing some demos during the uh, off part of the event. The dude has what it takes. He's a great skier. He's a really, really nice dude. Skis with the likes of Camilo Espinel, uh, you know, down there in Florida when he's down there. Ronnie Barton Bischoff, one of his coaches, and of course... The amazing, the incredible, the ultimate Nate Smith, also one of his mentors and ski mates as well. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what Ryan's going to do for us right here. Uh, coming in as the defending junior Masters champion of 2016. Got um, a one and a half buoys at 38 off, but a personal best of four buoys at 39. Can we, will we see it today? Let's check it out as he shortens that rope to 32 off, starting through those gates around the buoy number one, that first ball nice and early over to number two, early once again, staying poised in control, nice and patient as he goes early to pretty much each and every buoy as he came to number four, a little bit of a harder pull, and then once again into number five, getting around it with some ease. That's Ryan Canepa, the final skier of this heat of the junior men's semifinal round, slalom action out there on the water, and a full pass at 30. 2 up. That is a warm up for Ryan. So we're going to set him down. We're going to pick him back up. We're going to get him back on the water and give him another a shot out there on the water. Oh, Dano, <laughs> just a quick correction. It looks like six full buoys at 35. So Ryan Canepa, aggressive skiing, opens up with 32 off, comes back at 35. Now, to challenge the leader, what looks to be a slight tailwind here, needs any piece of number five, any piece of number five to take the lead. If he can do that, Dan, I don't want to get too far away from this, but if he can make his way through this pass, I mean, talk about an ideal situation to come back in at 39 and a half off with a slight textured headwind. But Ryan Canepa, first things first, let's see if he can punch his ticket into the next round, uh, the final round of competition.
competition. We're only taking the top three, Dano, and Ryan Canepa behind that Nautique 200. Here we go, your top seed here in the semifinal. Junior men's slalom event pulling out wide, and Ryan Canepa is in the course. He is around number one. Great turn at number one. Waiting on number two. A little stretched out into number three, but look at the angle out of number three. Over to number four. Can Ryan turn number five? And look at that. Knocking 38 off down. Back to my point earlier, Dano, so difficult to do on Robin Lake, so difficult to do in a slight tailwind. Ryan Canepa joins that elite group that is going to be privileged enough to come back in at 39 and a half off. Now I'm going to have to start going to look for the course record. All right, well, he has a personal best of four buoys at 39 off. We're going to see if he can... Uh, uh, try to reach or meet that here in a moment. We're going to give him about 30 seconds to uh, catch his breath out there. Man, I'll tell you what, getting this deep into the course, the fatigue is definitely setting in. Uh, Brando Caruso uh, set the record of two buoys at 39 off uh. back in 2014. So... Dano, I, this is well within reach. This I'm is sure, well sure, within reach. And I'm sure Ryan knows the score right now. He knows that he's punched the ticket into the next round of action. So what it all comes down to, can he, will he do it right here, right now? Guys, he has the momentum. Let's get behind him. Masters on your feet as Ryan Canema gets ready to come down the line. He's going to take that check cut outside the wake, and he's going to get ready to take that big cut through the gates around number one. Big pull at one, oh. and unfortunately snapping the handles. An unofficial word, an unofficial call. I think I'm going to call it as a half at 39 and a half. In you know, Canepa comes in at 39 and a half off, has nothing to lose but the course record, and he went for it. He knew he was going to have to have an aggressive turn, but it's going to be exciting as uh, Ryan Canepa will be your top seed and has the ability, as we've seen in this semifinal round, to challenge that course record by Brando Caruso set back in 2014 one more time here in 2017. All right, everybody. Well, hang tight. We're going to go into the final round of women's a slalom that's going to be coming up next we got our top three seeds getting ready to battle it out on the water we have a question you hungry thirsty well the beach pavilion offers sandwiches pizza sodas and much more and the neighboring beach bar well it's a great place to chill out with a cold drink and sunsets that's right for real feast check out the piedmont dining room restaurant in the lodge and spa on Friday nights, enjoy the popular seafood buffet. That sounds nice. The Country Kitchen menu features real down-home southern cooking. For a light lunch, stop by the Champions Grill at the Mountain View Clubhouse or grab a sandwich or salad at the Discovery Cafe. Guys, make sure you guys get over to the Piedmont Grill, the Ironwood Lounge in the Lodge and Spa, offering you some fine fare. And if you're in the mood for an elegant dinner, you'll not want to miss the Gardens Restaurant, Callaway Gardens Fine Dining Venue. So much to offer here at the Gardens, guys. And, well, you guys looking for your uh, vacation, perfect vacation? Well, it's called Summer Family Adventure. While children attend an exciting day camp with fun, challenging, and entertaining activities, all age appropriate, of course, Parents are free to be as active or relaxed as they choose. Mom and Dad, this one's for you. It's not too late to make your reservations. Go to CallawayGardens.com forward slash SFA dot or CallawayGardens.com to find out more information all about that. Guys, if you haven't heard, the Nautique brand offers a variety of superior quality inboards. To see the complete Nautique product line, visit them online at Nautique.com. The 58th Nautique Masters presented by GM Marine Technology, exclusively pulled by the world record-breaking Ski Nautique 200 and the award-winning Super Air Nautique G23. You guys can check them all out over at the Nautique tent here on site, once again, online at Nautique.com. Don't forget, for those of you guys here on site, even though for those of you online watching us through this great webcast, stay in the conversation all throughout the weekend on social media, whether you're posting photos on Instagram, tweeting about us on Twitter, or talking about us on Facebook. Make sure you use the hashtags, hashtag Nautique, hashtag Nautique Boat, 
hashtag Nautique Masters. And don't forget to tag Nautique Boats at Nautique Boats in each and every one of those social posts, of course. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night, guys, a very special invitation to everyone here at the 58th Nautique Masters. This is my story, invites you to the world premiere of their short film, Miracle Matt, one of the most inspiring stories you'll see in 2017. Matt Manzari is a walking miracle. This is a story of great hope in midst of life-threatening circumstances. Uh, please join us for the special event Saturday night from 8 to 9 p.m. at the Mountain Creek Inn. This event is free, so invite as many people as you'd like. Let's pack out the room, guys. Stop by the This Is My Story booth and find out more about Miracle Matt Manzari and his absolutely amazing story. Also wanna let you guys know that tonight it is Movies on the Beach. Over on the other side of the lake, guys, the first of the season, we're gonna be showing Finding Dory that kicks off at dark. I also wanna remind you, Following the competition, guys, there's still plenty of fun going on across the lake over at that East Beach. The Kids Zone, Mini Golf, the Aqua Island, and Paddle Boats, and they are all open till 7 p.m. So fully take advantage of everything they have to offer here at the Masters. I want to remind you, our friends at Wake for Warriors are in the house. The Wake for Warriors crew is here today and extremely excited to see some unbelievable action on the water as a proud partner with Nautique. Uh, Team Semper Fi, AOD Foundation, and many individual veterans, the Wake for Warriors team thrive to share their passion by teaching wounded military veterans how to wakeboard and wake surf. They provide adaptive therapy through challenge and camaraderie, and they give these 